This is Johnny Wrestling or Johnny Takeover, as my shirt says. And listen, I want you to listen. Like, we're the ball right now. It's crazy. It's loud. It's hectic. We're in New York City. But I want you to listen to the No Holds Barred Network. Welcome back to the No Holds Barred Network with another episode of Under the Ropes. I'm your host as always, the EVP of Giggles, the Heartbreak Chick, the Queen of the Indies, Tiffany. And I'm joined by the Law, Ray Ramundo. And today, special guest, Danny Limelight. How are you? Hold on one second. I'm so, again, like, how do you give yourself such a great intro? Then you just throw my name out. You throw Mr. Limelight's name out. Like, you got to be professional with it, Tiff. So, sorry about that, guys. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, depending on where you're at. This is a interview with, he is the man that brings the year of the spider. He is Danny Limelight. How are you doing, sir? What's going on, Raymond? What's up, Tiffany? How y'all doing? <laughs> I'm excited for this interview. Thank you <laughs> so much. Thanks for having me. Oh, we're getting the party started. You had the cereal going. I'm all excited. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm over here eating the Lucky Charms out the box, you know? I'm trying to, <laughs> trying to make sure I got the charm for the, for the podcast, you know? <laughs> Is that the favorite cereal? No, it's not. It's, it's the not. That I have right now, though. <laughs> so right now, it's currently hey, the favorite. It's working works. right now. Whatever works. <laughs> I'm feeling lucky today. So, um, guys, if you haven't watched uh, Under the Ropes before, we have wrestlers, we have promoters, we have ring announcers, we have refs. If they're out there, we want to, we want to sit there. We want to get to know. We're gonna get up close and personal. So, are you ready to do this, Danny? I'm always ready. All right. So. For the people that don't know about you, how did you become a professional wrestler? Okay, so, you know, growing up, I always wanted to be a wrestler or an actor. It was like one of those childhood dreams that I wanted to do. However, a, a street kid from Brooklyn, you know, you don't, I didn't know about independent wrestling. All I knew was WWF and WCW. Um, I didn't know there was such thing as Ring of Honor, New Japan, you know, independent wrestling promotions like House of Glory, The Crash and Tijuana, you know, all these amazing companies out there. I didn't know nothing about that. You know, I just knew The Rock. I knew Shawn Michaels. I knew Bret Hart, Undertaker, all these guys, you know. So uh, somewhere along the line, I, I fell out of watching wrestling. Um, and in 2014, my daughter was four months old and I was pushing a stroller through Target. And I went through the Blu-ray aisle, and my daughter, she, she always had hand in motion. You know, I had an eye coordination at a very young age. She was a fast learner. And I parked the cart by the Blu-rays, and I was looking on the opposite side for a film. I can't even remember which one. But she, like, smacked the Blu-rays, and a bunch of Blu-rays fell down. And so I started picking them up because I didn't want to be that parent at Target unless the kids just wreck stuff. Um, I was a new parent, too, so I didn't want to be embarrassed, you know. And, uh, you know, one of the DVDs or the Blu-rays that she knocked down was The Rock's Greatest Matches, right? Mm -hmm. So it was like top 10 greatest matches yeah, of The Rock. Yeah, and I was like, man, you know, like, I used to love, The Rock was my favorite of all time growing up. So I was like, I can go home and watch it. It was like $10 or something like that. So I bought the Blu-ray, went home. I put her in the Bopri, and I gave her a bottle, and I turned on the TV, and I, I started watching, you know, The Rock, you know, versus Austin at WrestleMania 17. And, and like, uh, just just watching all of his great matches, and my, my ex-wife, my daughter's mom at the time, she uh, she came into the room and she's like, you know, wrestling. I've never really sat down and watched. I've never seen this really. You know, I didn't grow up watching it on TV. My mom wouldn't let me. Yada yada yada. So I was like, you know, me being the hoods Prince Charming. I was like, well, it would be something cool to do. You know, like let me take her to like a WWE show. You know, I'm sure they'll be coming out here sooner or later to San Diego. Um, it might be fun. So I looked online and it turns out that WWE was coming to the Valley View Casino in San Diego next week. And so I was like, oh, this is just like 
you know, perfect timing. So I, I bought tickets. Me and her went to the show. We got a babysitter. We had a blast. And while I was at the show, this guy that I knew from the military, because I've, I've been in the Marine Corps 10 years, um, he came up to me. You know, at the time I was only a sergeant. Sergeant's still high rank with it. But he was like, hey, sergeant, what are you doing? Da, da, da. I didn't know you like wrestling. And, you know, I kind of like faved him. I was like, oh, you know, I didn't really watch it in a long time. You know, I haven't really been a fan in years, but this is date night, you know. Um, and he's like, I'm actually training to be a wrestler. And I stopped and I was like, what? <laughs> and he was like, I'm training to be a pro wrestler. And I started laughing because, you know, it, it sounds funny when somebody says that, you know, especially if you don't know what it is. You know, I looked at him. I'm like, yeah, right, bro. You're not going to the WWE. Like, what are you talking about? You know, I was clowning because it was something new to me. He's like, no, I'm not WWE. I'm not training with WWE. You know, he's like, I'm training with, you know, this promotion. Da 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 da. I don't want to talk about them, but. He was like, come on up, man. You know, you're very athletic. You're in shape. You're this, you're that. You're charismatic. Just come check it out, blah, blah, blah. So I showed up and, you know, just off the whim of things and I started training. And then three months after I started training, I made my debut. Um, you know, less than a year after making my debut, I made my TV debut. And then I just started wrestling all over as many places as I possibly could, you know. And it's been a blessing and it's been fun and it's had ups and downs and had injuries and I wouldn't change it for anything. Oh, that's so exciting. Oh, how old is your daughter now? She is six now. She's adorable. Aww. I see the pictures all the time. You're such a Thank good you. dad. She's so cute. So <laughs> in August, it will be six years that I started training to be a pro wrestler. But mm -hmm. I don't count full six years because I did take a two-year break, about a year and a half, almost two-year break in between because I was a, a drill instructor in the Marine Corps, so I didn't have time to really wrestle. Um so like I took a break in end of 2016, and I came back 2018, hit the ground running hard, and didn't look back since. Wow, so exciting! Awesome. You've been any. You kept it hot though. Even when you came back, it was like you never left. Yeah. It was awesome thank you. Thank you. I felt like I came back better than I was. You know, it felt good. <laughs> <laughs> we got some yeah, people in our you want, you want yeah. Yeah. we got people in the chat they're excited thank you guys share the stream let's get some people in here if you guys have questions drop them in the chat and we will ask him so i can't even see i can't even see anybody's chat <laughs> Yeah, there's there's a uh, we have some in Facebook live and and we have some in in, in the YouTube. So uh, thank you guys. Okay. And again, like I said, share the streams. So we get some more people in here. So yep. Sick. Okay, let's keep it going. So uh, can you tell us a little bit about your evolution in wrestling? So starting out, the first like character you did, and then how did we get to the current Danny Limelight? Evolution is a mystery. <laughs> That's like one of the best songs. Um, I, I've always been Danny Limelight. Um, the first name I selected when I wanted to be a professional wrestler was something that I wanted to represent me, um, wanted to be catchy, wanted to look good on flyers, wanted to be marketable, wanted to represent New York. And when I was selecting this name, you know, the only thing that I could think of is I knew I wanted to be like involved the bright lights of New York City, like the, that that high, fast-paced lifestyle, you know, that luxury living, that flashy, cocky mix of all of that stuff. And uh, all I could think about was Biggie Smalls. Now I'm in the limelight because I rhyme tight. Time to get paid, <laughs> blow up like the world trade, you know? And I was like, okay. And then I thought, of, you know, when I heard limelight, and I thought Kanye West. And she'll do anything for the limelight, and we'll do anything <laughs> yes. when the time's right, you know? <laughs> yes. So I was like, uh, I was like, okay, like that limelight is tight, you know. Um, the original name that I was thinking with, because I didn't want to use my first name, I wanted to use my middle name was Lewis. So I was like, Live Lewis, you know, mm -hmm. Lu Li Live Lewis. I was like, that's kind of cool. That has like a little ring to it. But then when Limelight came up, I was like, no, nah, there's no way that I'm selecting Live Lewis over Danny Limelight. And so I ran with Danny Limelight, and originally, you know, I was wearing tights. You know, like but bootleg tights. I didn't know where to get wrestling gear made at. Nobody like educated me, so I was like literally buying women's leggings. Um, <laughs> but I was getting like uh like the flashy designer kind of leggings. So like I would have like cool patterns like Tetris coming down or Deadpool on them or you know like New York City skylines or like like my my tights were tight. Like they were expensive tights, like leggings. They weren't tights. They were leggings. They were nice like designer leggings. And um, then I was like, oh, what if I got these leggings cut and sewn and made them into like short shorts kind of. And uh, I, I try to mimic my character over, like, a mix of The Miz and Mayweather. And I was able to put both of those cocky SOBs together, you know, be a loudmouth, arrogant douchebag. And, you know, it was rocking for a little bit. And then, you know, people 
in in, in the the fans that would show up to the shows, you know, they started watching me more and they started seeing what I can do. And I'm just naturally athletic. You know, I have a background in parkour. I have a background, in, you know, stunts, martial arts, all these things. And, and just, just, you know, running the rooftops in Brooklyn, playing manhood growing up. So I, I, I naturally in shape and fit, and I was fit because of the Marine Corps. And they started cheering for me. And you know, as a heel, you know, you don't, you don't want to be cheered. And I wasn't trying to, like, get them to cheer. I was just doing things that were innovative, that was different, that, you know, somebody who wasn't in the shape that I was in can do. And it kind of caught, like, a good little reaction from the crowd. And so I was like, I guess I got to go this way with it now. And... You know, I started being like the little baby face and stuff like that. And uh, at some point, you know, I, I changed my gear. I started getting, I got professional gear made. And then Dave Marquez from Championship Wrestling from Hollywood. And I love that man. He was like, hey, we want to bring you up to Hollywood for TV. You know, we want to partner you with Seville. And we want you guys to be Los Primos Rivera. And I was like, as long as I'm keeping my last name, I'm good. So then it was like Danny Limelight Rivera for TV, uh, uh, for Championship Wrestling from Hollywood. And I ran with that, and from there I was wearing like the short biker shorts, kind of, but it was Puerto Rican style, and we came out with the Puerto Rican flag, and we would just talk shit and like <laughs> do all types of like reckless stuff in the ring, and it was fun, it was cool. But then on the independent scene, I was like still doing Danny Limelight, so I was still doing my flashy stuff and not really wearing the Puerto Rican flag all the time. And then, you know, I kind of went away for a little bit, and when I came back, you know, I I like hit the ground running as Limelight. I didn't rock the Puerto Rican flag. It was very much just baby face you know, doing all this stuff that I knew how to do. And then 2019 hit and it just felt like one of those years, you know, like it just felt like, like I had building up momentum on my comeback. You know, I won all these championships in my first year back and I felt like 2019 was going to be my year. And, and, you know, from all the athletic stuff that I was doing in the ring, like the fans that were calling me Spidey Limelight, Spidey Limelight, Spidey Limelight. And so I was like, you know what? Like if they know me, they know that Spider-Man is my favorite. Like that he, I resonate very well with the dude. So, you know, it's the year of the spider. And all my gear, I switched my gear like every month. And it was just different. Uh, it was trunks. I went to trunks now. So I was no more tights, no more shorts. It was trunks. And it was different types of spider gear. Like different kind of spiders with some different variations of the comic books. So I had, you know, the red and blue. I had the, the, the symbiote Spider-Man. I had the, the Captain America hybrid with Spider-Man. I had the the uh the the spider-man 2099 i had the um iron spider i had all types of you know future foundation all these different kind of gear patterns i was getting made by samantha packer shout out to samantha packer she turns my gear around in like three days i have new gear when i call her i love that woman wow. she does she does all my gear nobody else does my gear but samantha packer um she's awesome i love her thank you to samantha and so i started rocking the year to spider and, and things started going really really well for me and then at the end of the year to spider you know i separated my shoulder wrestling and they told me i was gonna be out for six months um but you know when you're a spider you got those radioactive genes so i came back one month after separating my shoulder and i started wrestling again but i mean i didn't let it fully heal the way it should so the people see like right here you can see the the little little bone coming yeah. out right here it's still separated but i got full range of motion i'm lifting weights i'm lifting as heavy as i used to um and i'm grinding when i came back you know, I said, you know what, it's time to go back to what I believe really started getting me the bookings that I wanted, which was playing that loudmouth Puerto Rican on TV, you know, as part of Los Primos Rivera. And I was like, you know what, like, I'm going to go back, but I'm going to still stay true to who I've evolved into. But now I just want to solely represent Brooklyn and Puerto Rico because there's not many Puerto Ricans on TV besides, you know, Proud and Powerful and AEW. Um, you had used to have Primo and Epico, but you know they're not really around like that no more. You know the Cologne family is in Puerto Rico. Sabia Vega, nobody knows where he's at lately. You know, um, it's, it, it's, there's not many Puerto Ricans doing our thing. You know, you got you got Lince Dorado. Shout out to Lince Dorado, my homie actually. You know, um, he's on WWE doing his thing. But but who else? Can can anybody name a Puerto Rican out there doing it right now? Besides besides Lince, besides Santana and Ortiz, I can't think of nobody else. So I wanted to be that on the independent scene, you know. There's right. on, in the, in the, in the, on the independent scene, there's not many of us either, you know. Right. So um, I started rocking. I went back that way. I don't come out with the flag no more, but I come out with like a bandana. I got the New York bubble vest on, you know. But my gear has the Puerto Rican flag, and I rock the Statue of Liberty for New York. But the Statue of Liberty, she's rocking a Puerto Rican bandana around her head. Yeah. So I keep it. I keep it real, real, real New York, real Boricua, <laughs> and, and, and that's that's the evolution of Danny Limelight, you know. Um, <laughs> I don't I don't call it the year of the spider no more. Um, I just I just talk my stuff and, and and everybody else that got a problem with it, you know, push your shit up in the ring. 
<laughs> I oh, love. I respect it, man. I respect it. Yeah. I respect it. And I love, like, I had to have you on because we're both from New York as well, so we need to represent a little yeah, New we York do. in here, a little bit of the New York. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, uh, I, I love it. I lost my accent. I love it. See, you gotta come back over to New York so we can come and we can cheer. Oh wait, wait, we gotta boo you, right? <laughs> you know? uh, no, whatever. Man. Actually, right now, I, um, because I came back, I kind of, you know, I'm, I, I'm kind of on a face run right now so yeah so i'll definitely be there then i gotta be front row i'll be cheering but like i cheer the heels too because i'm like that so but <laughs> that's just me so but I feel it. <laughs> okay so we have a fan tweet from our friend okay. rj he said if you can create a faction with yourself included who would it be and why if i could create a faction mm -hmm. from, like, like can i select anybody anybody from, like, anywhere anybody Oh shit. Okay. Um, <laughs> Got to keep you on your toes around here. You okay, know? <laughs> so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna shout out one of my homies, Matthew Saw. Um, okay. He, he's, he's a huge wrestling fan. We were in the Marine Corps together, um, and he always envisioned like, he, like, oh, if I could pick anybody to be in a faction with you, it would be you. You know, it would be Velveteen Dream. Um, he said it'll be uh, oh, who was the other guy? Who was the other? Um, I think it was John Morrison. <laughs> And, and somebody else. I can't remember who he said, but he always would always pick these, me and these other three guys that will always be the ones that he would want in his faction. Um, so shout out to him for, for always doing that. But for me, if I had to pick somebody, I think it would be cool if, you know, if it was me, Santana, and Ortiz. And, and we was like just running through on some rugged Puerto Rican, New York shit, because we all New York Ricans. Um, and, and we were just running and, and like, taking no prisoners. I think that would be tight, you know, be good for the culture, be good for the city. Um, and if I'm thinking of like just a, like a dream faction, um, shit, me, The Rock, uh, Randy Orton, and Adam Cole off the top of my Ooh, head. Okay. That would be, I think that would be very, very, you know, just some pretty boy ass whooping, <laughs> loud mouth street talking, <laughs> you know, guys like a back it up in the ring. You know, that would be, you know, the Rock's my favorite of all time. Randy Orton, I love that dude too. He's a great man. We've, I've actually had the pleasure of sitting down talking to him about some stuff because you know he has the Marine Corps background and then transitioning into wrestling. Same same path I'm taking with The Rock. You know, starting as a wrestler, transitioning into acting, and that's what I'm doing now. You know, between wrestling, acting, and, and everything that I'm doing in Hollywood. So uh, that would be my faction. Awesome. I, mean, I don't know if that's a cool answer or not, but that's what I would do. Oh, I like it. I like. There's no I'm wrong answer. Just answers imagining here. the promos now from that faction though. <laughs> Y'all all just want to hog the mic, though. Yeah. <laughs> get some. Yep, yep. You'll get some chanclas. And some stuff. <laughs> He's laughing at me. Nah, yo, like, can you just imagine me, Ortiz, and Santana running around with chanclas yes. and, and belts? Yes. Whipping everybody's ass. I'm for this. Let's make this happen. <laughs> like, I'm so everybody, excited. Everybody just tweet. AEW, we want to see Limelight with Ortiz and Santana. There we That's go, it. there we go. Like, <laughs> I want to see this. I, I really, oh man, the, I'm thinking about the basket that was going on oh, on the AEW. Was hilarious. <laughs> It's so, so accurate, too, right? So accurate. It really is. Like, oh, oh my goodness, man. it's too funny. So, but um, so let's move on. So, congratulations on uh, you know, congratulations in order for uh, getting the opportunity to wrestle for New Japan's LA JoJo for the Lions Break Collision. Can you? Thank you so much. Oh, I'm so excited for you. So, can you tell us a little bit about how that came to be? Yeah, absolutely. Um, first, again, we're going to go back to Mr. Marquez, David Marquez from Hollywood. Shout out to him. You know, I would have never met Rocky Romero if he never brought me on to, you know, to CWFH. And, and you know, I met Rocky one time and we immediately clicked, you know, his last name and mine. You know, we just had we just had so many things that we that we rocked with him being Latino, me being Latino, smaller guys, you know with the swag and stuff like that. And we clicked very well. We kept in touch over the years. I met him about five years ago, little, a little less than five, maybe like four and a half years ago, I met Rocky for the first time. And, um, you know, we kept in touch, just, you know, homies, you know, showing love on the internet. Uh, I'm a big fan of showing love. And uh, he had invited me out, you know, to the New Japan tryout that they had in the fall. Um, and I went out there, I got to tag team with Mysterioso against the Regal Twins. Shout out to the, to all three of those guys, you know, shout out to Mysterio. So shout out to the Regal Twins. They talented the dudes that need more, need more people talking about them. And, you know, we had a good tag match at the tryout. Rocky gave me his, you know, real critique, real feedback, told me why he liked, told me why I want, why he wanted me to fix. Um, and he just showed me love. And he said, you know, we, we, I like what we saw. 
we like what we saw, yada, yada, yada. We want to bring you out. And, uh, you know, quarantine happened, so it delayed the process. But I feel like time is everything, and I think it's God's plan that this was the time to call me up. And, and I got the call, and I came out, and I got to, you know, wrestle for New Japan Pro Wrestling. Um, and I got to wrestle two people. I had two matches that are going to be airing next month. And, you know, amazing, amazing time, super humbling experience. Um, it was an honor and a privilege to share the locker room with a lot of those guys like Jeff Cobb, who's a good friend of mine, Brody King, Bateman. Um, you had, you know, Carl Fredericks there, you know, um, Ryan Taylor, you know, just a bunch of a uh, bunch of the TJP. Shout out to TJP. That's my homie. Um, a lot a lot of people in that locker room that I respect. And, and, and it was just a great, great time overall. Oof. I'm excited. I can't wait to see this. Oh, I, I, I mean, I want to tell y'all who I wrestled, but I can't. No, I know you can't. We're I not going to ask that. We, we know. But, <laughs> but I, t- I will tell you this. It was, a, it, was a fire, it was a fire match with, with someone that I really, really respect and has done it all in this business, in my opinion. Um, I've wrestled him before, and that's, that's I can't say nothing. Okay, else. don't say anything. Okay, okay. I can't say nothing no. else. I can't say nothing the, else. The, world, the only thing we're going to say is that we're going to share it when it comes out, and you guys better watch it. Okay, guys? Yep. Like, that. that's exactly. it. That's all we're going to say. That's, so. that's all we're going to say. That's all we're going to say. <laughs> that's um, great. Gotta keep them on their toes. Yeah. Okay, so let's keep it going, though. So, uh, could you describe your relationship with Gino and your time as Los Primos Rivera? Los Primos Rivera was one of the... One of the most fun. I, I, I've never wanted to be in a tag team, ever. I, I always felt like I had, you know, the talent to be by myself. Um, but when, when the idea was brought to my t- attention um, by, once again, Mr. Marquez and Angelo Trinidad over at Hollywood, um, I couldn't think of anybody else better to be in a tag team. Someone who we look alike. We, not we look alike, because I think I'm, I'm better looking. Shout out to Gino. No, no hate, brother. <laughs> but I think, I think I'm the papi chulo in the group, you know. Um, and... Uh, you know, we just re- we 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 complement each other very well uh, in terms of looks, ideas, design. You know, build, and, and we we had the chemistry. It was natural. It was, there was no oh, bro, what do you want to do today? No, no. We they it was time for a promo. We walked up, looked at each other, and we just fed off each other, and we just went, and we just da, 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 mouthpiece, mouthpiece. You know, it was it was it was fun time. You know, I, I wish I wish things would have lasted a little longer. Um, I wish I wish things went a little bit differently than the way it ended. Um, but I will say that me and Gino um, are on good terms again. Um, it's, it's all love on this side with me. I know it's all love on him. We had the conversation. Um, it was fun. We got to travel around, do some things. You know, we made our debut in Arizona. We wrestled in San Diego. We we wrestled in, 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 at Hollywood on TV together. It was a fun time. You know, it was something that could have been something special. I think it was still special from the time that it was. And hey, you know, if I ever see him, you know, if I ever need to call my primo up for something, you know, I'm sure he'll be there. So. <laughs> oh it's great oh man um so i love this question what's the best piece of advice that another wrestler has given you mm. <laughs> work smarter not harder brother <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no um, <laughs> um let me think let me think uh best piece of advice hmm I don't. I don't know. I've 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 been fortunate enough to to like hang around the tree, of of, of a lot of great talent. Um, you know, speaking with T J Perkins, working with Lil Cholo and Mariachi Loco, training with them. You know, sitting under the tutelage of Paul London, working with John Morrison, who's a great friend of mine, a real friend of mine. You know, um, and, and and I think I think more recently it was it would be with working with Morrison, and training with Morrison, and and, and him telling me that you know. You and I have similar styles. You have the parkour background. You have the stunt background. You have the athleticism, the charisma, the energy. You don't get tired. You know, you don't blow up so fast. And, but he was like, just know when to use that, when to exert that, and, and when, and understanding who you're in the ring with so that, you know, you don't make them look bad and, and, and everything makes sense, stuff like that. Um, but it, it, you know, and, and, and it's just... You know, and it is true. Work smarter, not harder. Even though everybody jokes about that, it's the truth. You know, I find myself now doing a lot of things that I differently than I used to do in terms of my body, in terms of longevity, and wanting to stay in this game a little bit longer. Um, I, I've been in seminars with you know Adam Cole and Roderick Strong, um, you know, Al Snow. You know, I've, I've been I've, I've sat under and listened to some of the best to ever do it, um, and I'm blessed for that. And, and they always say amazing things. They always drop these gold nuggets and and 
it's just applying it, you know. So anybody could give you the best advice, but if you're not putting it forward, uh, putting it into action, then it doesn't matter what they tell you. And I think that this last year, you know, the, exiting the year of the spider and coming into my 2020 vision, um, I had a plan, and I think that everything that I wanted to do, even with the coronavirus and all that stuff, the pandemic stopping most of the people's dreams and plans, I think that I was still able to get a lot done, you know, build some kind of, you know, attention around my name. And, and even last year, you know, I ended the year wrestling with impact you know, for the X Division Championship and my debut with Impact and with some amazing talent in the ring as well. And it's just, it's just, I feel like everything that I've been working towards and all the advice that's been given to me and everything I've been applying and changing and switching up and using and tossing off, it doesn't apply. And it's all, it's all got me to where I'm at today. So I'm very, I'm very thankful for that. That's, that's another thing that, you know, that's God's plan. I'm thankful for that as well. Oh, um, I have a, a, a question in the chat for you. So from our girl, Margaret, she said, what was your favorite match slash opponent you had in CWFH? Hey, Margaret. <laughs> um, let me see. Favorite match ever at CWFH would have to be my one-on-one -on -one with Adrian Quest in the PP3 Cup finals last year. More recently, I had an amazing match with my boy Ice, 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 Ice Williams out of Vegas. If not, if y'all don't know who Ice Williams is, look up my boy Ice Williams. Um, he's a young up-and-coming talent. He's been training a lot with my boy Chris Bay. Shout out to Chris Bay. Love Chris uh, Bay. And, and we just had a we just had a banger of a match at, at Championship Wrestling from Hollywood. Um, I put his ass down because you know I don't play those games, but <laughs> but it, but it was a fire match. You know what I'm saying? I had a I had a I had a I had a you know put a little bit of heat on that ice. You know. Ooh. <laughs> Oh, I felt that. <laughs> Shout out to Ice Twins, Yo, man. Your that cold swagger dude. doesn't stop. Yeah, that doesn't like, stop, oof. It's just got <laughs> cold in here. <laughs> Somebody sign this boy. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> oh, All right, let's keep it going. So, like you mentioned, you're a New Yorkian, so you're from our tri-state area. So have you been keeping tabs, though, on the New York indie scene? And if you have, is there places you look forward to maybe working or is there anyone that you would want to face? You know what's that? That's me knocking on the door of any promotion that has who they think the best talent is that wants to step into the ring with me. That's, that's what that is. Ooh. Anybody that answers this door, I'll be there. House of Glory, you know, Chaotic Wrestling, you know, Limitless Wrestling in Maine. I don't care. Anywhere. Anywhere, anywhere, anywhere. New York Wrestling Connection. Um, I've been, I've been to CCW. I wrestled at CCW, but I, I'd love to go back. Let's do CCW. I don't care where it's at. IWW, where I made my New York debut at. Um, I've wrestled for XWA several times. I, I'll go back to XWA in Rhode Island any day. Um, and, and I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm hungry and I'm willing and I'm able to take on whoever wanted. You know, there's some guys that I want to wrestle out there. You know, shout out to Casey Navarro. I see you, homie. I see you grinding. I want to I wanna work with you. Um, that's just the one person off the top of my head out there. You know, JT Dunn, my boy JT Dunn. That's a Brother of mine, I love that man to death. Shout out to JT Dunn. We ain't never had a chance, you know, to wrestle, but we don't went to the zoo together and shit like that in San Diego, you know? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it's love. It's all love. And I, I want to get in the ring with JT. Um, I've wrestled Ace Austin. I'd love to get in the ring with Ace Austin again, you know, even though he's over at Impact. And just and just anybody, any any hot talent that's, that, that wants to throw down, I see my stuff and want to work, let's work, man. Let's let's skip the talk and let's, let's skip the small play. Let, let's get straight to it. Get the booking going. Catch my flight and let's get it. Ooh. It's, it's funny, though. You mentioned your boy, CJP. Last time I checked at a certain promotion, he's the current crown jewel champion. Ooh. Ooh. Name it. What promotion is that? Survey says. Ooh. Ah, promotion I work at, House of Glory. Oh, House of Glory. <laughs> you hear me, TJ Perkins? <laughs> we wrestled once, Ooh. twice. Let's do Let's it. Let's do it again. Yeah. Nice, like nice to said. know ya. Let's do it again. Maybe third time. Oh, we did it in the. Oh. Maybe third time's a charm there. Who knows? Third time's a charm. Let's throw down. Ooh, we got It's to... nice to nice to know ya. Let's do it again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm loving this interview. <laughs> I really am. JP, I'm coming for you. <laughs> Typical New Yorker. I love it. I love it. <laughs> okay. So, do you have any pre-match rituals that you do? 
Oh, you know what's crazy? This is the, only the second time I've been asked that question ever. Ooh, and okay. the first time it was like two days ago in the last interview I did. Oh. So like, I'm so excited to, t I'm so excited to tell, to tell oh, this good. because Yay. I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't ever like really get asked this question. Um, yes, in 2014, October 11th, I made my debut. Um, that day, I was with my daughter early in the day. I can't remember what we were doing, but I was getting ready because I was super nervous and stuff like that. And she was only what, six months. She was six, almost six months old. So she was still on a pacifier. Um, matter of fact, hold on one second. Uh oh. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> I don't know if I should be scared or what. <laughs> well, you have to do the Jeopardy. <laughs> she was she was still on a pacifier. I showed I showed up to the show, started getting you know dressed and stuff like that, and when I pulled my gear out, her pacifier was oh. in my was in my bag. Oh. And, and so like I looked at it, and it's crazy because you know like her name is Khaleesi, and it's a little baby dragon with a bow. Right, and so I looked. I looked at the pacifier, and I was like, "Oh, it's like an all chewed up pacifier and stuff like that." I was like, "I'm just gonna keep this in my gear bag," you know. She was a baby. I wasn't gonna put it back in her mouth ever because it was in my gear bag and, and you know germs and stuff like that. So, before every match, I always take the pacifier out. The same pacifier that I've had for almost six years now in my bag, same gear bag, um, and I always kiss it and I pray. And I thank God for her, I, you know, I thank God for everybody that, that, that comes to the show. And I thank God for, to keep, you know, keep me alive in the ring and keep me and my opponent safe and stuff like that. And that's my pre rash ritual. I just grabbed the pacifier, you Aww. know, and it's, it's, I love it's, it's that. been there ever since. Oh, that's, that's a beautiful story. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's I amazing. love that. Thank you for sharing that with us. Oh, man, I love it. Um, we have another fan tweet from our friend Kenny. He said, okay. who was your favorite wrestler growing up? If you're <laughs> The Rock, I said it over and over and over and over again. The Rock's my favorite of all time. Um, if I had to pick a close second, it'd be Randy Orton. Um, yeah, man. But lately, you know, if we want to talk lately, I like I like watching my homie Angel Garza. Ooh, okay. I wrestled with Garza at the crash, and, and it's just something about him that oozes charisma, oozes swag. Shout out to my boy Garza. I like watching his stuff. Um, I love watching my boy Morrison do his thing, you know. Um, but you know, it's pretty cool growing up, you know, like seeing like, like Morrison's evolution and stuff like that, and, and being a fan of his, and then getting to meet him, work with him, be in a movie with him. Thanks to him for bringing me on set to be a part of his film, do all the stunts for the bad guys. Um, so yeah, you know. But the all time, all time is the Rock. Awesome. <clears throat> awesome. There you go. Love it. The people's champ. There you go. So uh, let's keep it going. Though. So uh, you've gotten the opportunity to work on shows such as The Crash and Triple and Triple A. Triple A. The culture, though, how is it compared to shows here in the States? Ooh. The wrestling Ooh. I love that question. Um, so the first time I wrestled at The Crash, the main event was Santo and Hijo de Santo and and they were in the ring with like Penta and, and Phoenix, and it was all these, you know, Ray Horace, all these le like like badass luchadors. And I was making my debut to open the show. And I walked into the building, and I just like I told myself, if I never wrestle again, this is my WrestleMania. I want to give a shout out to Conan, who actually he just slid in my DMs on Twitter to talk about his podcast and stuff like that. Um, but but shout out to Conan because he saw me wrestling in San Diego, and he pulled me to the crash. Um, and, and so I had a fire and the match that we had was a fire match. I won my debut match at the crash. I hit my 450 back when I was doing the 450. I used to call it the photo bomb, you know, because because my my, my, my little catchphrase was get your cameras ready. So that, that's the photo bomb. Boom. <laughs> no, not working for you. Not cool. All right, whatever. <laughs> um, so I did my thing, you know, um, Rey Mysterio was there. Lindsay Dorado. That's why I met Lindsay Dorado at was at my debut match at the crash. And I just kept going back, you know, and I built a really, really strong relationship with, you know, Phoenix and Penta. Those are my boys. Ray Horace, my boy. Um, and just, you know, all the other guys that was at the crash. It was, it's, been a, it's been a great time. And even making my debut at AAA, like, it's just the same energy. Conan brought me to AAA. You know, he brought me to the crash and he brought me to AAA. So it's like, I'm grateful for Conan, you know, and, and, and just, you know, I, just being able to, like, that's where I met Angel Garza at, you know. Gar back then it was just Garza. That's where I met Garza at. Um, and that's why I met Humberto at, but he was wearing a mask at the time, you know. Um, that's why I met a lot of these people. That's why I met Christy James at at the crash. Shout out to Christy James, I love her. That's yeah. my homegirl. That's my tag partner. I never ever 
The only female I've ever tagged with, only two females I've ever tagged with was Christy Janes and Lady Flama. And Christy, I love her to death. I love her energy. And she's just a great human being. Um, who else? What else? Who else did I meet and build a, a solid connection with? Prince P uh, Puma King. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Willie Mac used to go there all the time, but I knew Willie Mac from, from the San Diego scene. Um, yeah, and it's just, it's just been awesome being able to go there and wrestle in front of those fans. Just every time you go, it's 5,000, 4,000 people inside the, you know, the Fausto Gutierrez Auditorium. And it's just an energy like no other. And I come out with my Puerto Rican flag and they're, oh, dale, wey, oh, ra, da, da, da. <laughs> All the stuff they be screaming and stuff like that. And I'll be like, ah. <laughs> you know, and they, they love, like, I know, I know they love me. You know, I know they love, they love me and stuff like that. But it, I be having some fun out there. It feel, it's that big, big match feel every time. Just because of the energy in the building, they love they love Lucha Libre, so I'm super grateful to wrestle there every chance I get. And if you're able to say I wrestled in Mexico, it's just it's just awesome. Awesome! Oh, I love for it. The two biggest for the two biggest companies in Mexico, you know, not like just like some random hole in the wall, you know, independent wrestling company. Right, know? right. Yeah, that's already under your belt. Imagine so young and already under your belt getting to work at yeah two of the biggest in Mexico. So awesome. Um, so what are some things that you like to do when you're all, when you aren't uh, aren't in the ring? Um, hang out with my daughter. You know, I let her do my makeup. We do that. <laughs> um, watch movies. I'm a huge movie guy. I love to write films. I'm a I'm a I'm a producer. Shout out to Limelight Productions. I'm a producer. I'm a writer. I'm an actor. I'm a director. I'm a stunt man. I'm a stunt coordinator. Um, I do that a lot, man. Like. This entire quarantine so far, we've shot four films, two action fight scenes only. Um, and, and now we, we just wrapped one film yesterday about human sex trafficking. So it was uh, trying to spread a huge message. So I just want to shout out to all the cast and crew of 207. You can follow them at, at kidnap207 on Instagram. Um, see all the actresses and actors involved with the project. I wrote the film, uh, produced it, starred in it. And it's just great to work beside those young ladies. Um, and, and just now we got three more films lined up that I already finished writing. That we're gonna be shooting the next month and a half. So I like to do that, you know, work out of course, um, post thirst traps on Instagram and do dances <laughs> on TikTok. I do that stuff. Um, and I like to cook too. I like to cook. Ooh. So, what's your dish? I like, to, I like to have fun, you know. Oh, Puerto Rican food. My favorite dish to cook is pork chops and tostones. Oh my god. Beans, with avocado. Can, can but I... like when I have like a big date coming over, I cook that knee, you know. Oh my god. Can so, I come over? Not impressed. Not can, impressed. Not impressed, you know. <laughs> Can I come um, over, please? Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so yeah, that's something I like to do. I, I like to go on adventure, man. For me, like life's an adventure. I make the most of it. I fell in love with myself all over again this year. I had a 2020 vision. I wasn't gonna let nothing stop me. Nothing has stopped me yet, and and, and I'm doing amazing. I just like to have fun. So y'all could go to the club and to the bars, but I'm trying to go skydiving and jet skiing. I'm trying to go have you know time of my life, capture moments that, that, that people are afraid to go do because they'd rather spend money on alcohol and shit like that. And it's all good, a party. If you're going to drink, let me know. We can take shots of Hennessy any day. That's the only thing that I drink. But if we have a choice, I'd rather go on an adventure. <laughs> I love it. Oh, man. It's starting to downpour here, and it's starting to mess up YouTube. So but we can it's starting to oh. pour? Yeah, it's uh, downpouring. I'm the bringer of rain now. <laughs> That's the bringer of rain. Oh, Danny fucking limelight. Oh man. Oh, okay, man. so but we're gonna keep going because we're still Let's recording. Going, we're, we're, we don't need to stop. Yeah, we're sure. gonna we're gonna keep we'll going. Don't stop till <laughs> six in the morning. This is why we record just in case as well. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> go ahead, Ray. You're up. Uh, no, but wait. First question though, you gonna put me in a movie though? <laughs> oh, you gotta come out. You gotta come out to uh, to Cali, man. You know, huh? you got you gotta you gotta come out here to Cali. Oh man. We'll, we'll, we'll talk after. We'll talk. My people talk to your people. We, uh, we yeah. out. We out. <laughs> as, long as, as long as your people talk to your other people to get me the house of glory. They, oh, see, see, oh, see. Touche. 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 See? <laughs> I love it. Touche. So, real question. Okay. If there was one person you could face again in a heartbeat, who would it be? Face again? Phoenix. Anyone that you. Any Ooh. day of the week, Phoenix. There you go. Or, or if, okay, or Chris Bay. Chris Bay, let's go. <laughs> Phoenix or Chris Bay are my favorite opponents ever. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. Oh, man. I had fun with Penta, too, but, but me and Phoenix, we just vibe differently. Even in the locker room, we just vibe differently. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm definitely down for either or. Let's make it happen. Right? Get on it. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
<laughs> okay. <laughs> so oh, TJ Perkins too. I wrestle. I wrestle TJ any day of the week. There you go. See, all day. Those are my top three opponents that I've that people that I've already wrestled that I will wrestle again. Phoenix, Chris Bay, and TJP. No specific order. Just dumb three. Let's do a four way. Fuck it. Let's I was just gonna four-way. say that. Let's do a four way. Let's just do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's let's make this happen. <laughs> um. Okay, so what move do you define to be your finisher, and what made you pick this move? Um, my finishing move is called the Symbio DDT. Uh, anybody that's watched me knows that once I hit my springboard DDT, it's lights out. Um, and I don't, I don't sit on the top rope and jump. I don't hold their wrist and go. I just run up the rope. I bounce from the second on the right side of the rope to the third or the left side of the rope. And I t- jump up in the air, get some crazy hang time wrap my arms around their head and drive them to the mat one, two, three every time. So I, I definitely resonate with the Symbio DDT. Um, and then I also do a dragon sleeper. I call it the New York Minute because in the New York Minute, lights out, baby. <laughs> I love it. Sleep time. Night, night. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> and then like, well, I guess a signature move of mine is a Spanish fly, running Spanish fly. I used to call it the Maximum Spider. And then um, back in the day, like I said, I used to do the 450. Um, and then I got like a pretty cool like uh, tornado kick. I call it Hurricane Sandy. Ooh, ooh, I like it. There you go. Oh man, everything is like sudden impact though. You just hear it like, boom, bless boom, you. Boom, yep. boom, boom, boom. So, I can, so I can hit it out of nowhere. Oh. Shout yeah, out to Randy Orton. Out of nowhere. <laughs> okay. Oh man. Okay. So let's keep it going. So. Uh, Tiff's gonna hate me for this question. <sighs> so to throw Tiffany under the bus just a little bit. Of course. Last September, you got to wrestle at Ground Zero against a good friend of mine, the one above all, Anthony Gangone. Can you tell us your thoughts on Tiff's number one husband? <laughs> oh shit, that's your husband. <laughs> <laughs> so the gimmick Anthony, is. <laughs> Well, I'm known to have a list of husbands. So, Um, first of all, I want to say I met Anthony Gangone when I made my debut at IWW last year, tomorrow. Um, One year ago, tomorrow, at IWW. And in the locker room, he he was just a cool dude, a good guy. We connected very well. We just chopped it up, talked shit, you know, had a good time. Unfortunately for Anthony Gangone, he had to follow my match with Jordan Oliver. So, you know, you know, um, he wrestled Vinny Pacifico and Douglas James in the main event of that match, of that show. Um, and, and so, you know, we connected, we clicked, everything was cool. But when, when, I, when he came out to uh, San Diego for Ground Zero and we had that scramble match, first of all, anybody that saw that match knows that it was fire. Yes. Had a great time. Um, it was just—it was just a great time, you know, being in the ring with. It was him, it was me, uh, it was uh, um, Jude Diz, Matt Vandegrift, Adrian Quest, um, and it was—it was—it was a really, really, really fun match, and I, I really, really enjoyed that match. <laughs> Damn it, Ray! He's a good guy. He's a good <laughs> That's guy. It. That's Damn it, Tiff! I think Tiff's broken now. Damn it, Tiff! Some Everybody throws me under the damn bus. Damn it, Ray. Now you're part of it. We, we, we're going to talk offline now, I swear. Oh, <laughs> man. You're in trouble now. I didn't, even know that, I didn't even know about this question. <laughs> uh, anyway, <laughs> back to reality. Okay, so back I have the... Back to reality. Oops, there goes gravity. <laughs> All right, so I have an infamous question that I ask everybody that comes on this podcast. What's the craziest thing a fan's done to get your attention? Huh? <laughs> um, uh, judge, I plead the fifth. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. I've, I've had That's a lot crazy. of. I've had a lot of things. Oh, um, my DMs sometimes are very inappropriate. You know, and, and uh, fortunately, I can say I've never, ever, like, you know, really hooked up with wrestlers or fans or anything like that. Um, fans do a lot of things. They say a lot of things. They insinuate a lot of things, especially the, the women fans um, and the men fans, too. But but uh, I, it's all it's all good fun with me. I, you know, I brush it off as fun and I don't take anything personal. Um, and I show love to everybody, man. That's I spread love is the Brooklyn way, you know. 
Yeah. That's just that's just how I am. So I don't I don't want to really, you know, point out anything specific, but it has been a lot of fun, crazy, wild things that have happened over the course of the time that I've been wrestling when people try to get my attention and stuff like that. So you never had a pizza thrown at you, have you? Because we've heard that story on no, the podcast. But I, but I have <laughs> taken a pizza from a kid and ate it. You took a pizza from a kid? Yeah. Why? He loved it though. He secretly loved it. <laughs> Um, he secretly loved yeah. it, you say. So he was crying. Tears of joy, was was tears of joy. yeah. Um, <laughs> I've had, I've, I've, yeah, fans have given me, like, beer in a match or, like, like water in a match, grabbing, like, ah, you know. Um, food all the time, nachos. I love when they hook me up with the nachos. Um, yeah. It's, uh, okay, well, okay. <laughs> One time, this lady had like Spider Spider Man like um, pennies. Oh and no! She, like like she just like showed me. She didn't like show me much, but she just like pulled it she down gave, so I could see the Spider Man on it. So that that's I'll say that because it's not that bad. <laughs> that was one thing that she did. Damn! That was, that was during the year of the spider. <laughs> the year of the Spider Man. <laughs> um. Well, well then. Okay. <laughs> I love it. Oh jeez. Um, okay. Let's keep it going. So we're down to our final two questions here. So let's start taking it home. So uh -oh. let's go serious question here. What's the end goal in wrestling? What's your oh. end goal? There is no end game. Ooh, mm. no, end game. no end game. I don't think I'll ever be satisfied. See? Um, everything I do in life, I'm never satisfied. I was a staff sergeant in the Marine Corps. I was a drone instructor. made over 350 Marines, still wasn't satisfied. You know, I've won championships in different companies, still wasn't satisfied. I wrestled at Impact, I wrestled in New Japan, you know, I've wrestled in Mexico, I wrestled all over the United States, still not satisfied. I can, I had small appearances on WWE, I had a tryout match in WWE, still not satisfied, you know. I I can, God, you know, God's plan, if I if I ever win the WWE championship, I won't be satisfied, because then there's the next step, being, you know, a Hall of Famer, you know, and then it's like, okay, once you're a Hall of Famer, well, Ric Flair's a two-time Hall of Famer, so I guess now I gotta be a two-time Hall of Famer, like, or if I go to AEW, like, this is, this is just so many things, or New Japan, or wrestling in Japan, now if I go there, that's a whole other continent that I need to, you know, be able to impress and do things there, so I'm just, I'm never satisfied, and even with acting and stunts and everything else that I do, I'm not satisfied, I'm hungry, I'm a hard worker, and, and you need to be hungry, you need to be a hard worker to be, to last in this business, so I guess if I had to think of an a ending goal, it would be to inspire everybody that watches me, um, and, and, and leave a legacy, a long lasting legacy that, that people will look back and oh yeah, I remember that dude, yeah man, I, he, you know, he had some memorable moments. I remember this one time I saw him wrestle and do this. So I remember the first time I saw him do that, you know? And, it's just, and it's, that's all it is, creating experiences, creating moments for fans to remember because without the fans, it's none of this is possible. Um, but individual goals, I just, I just want to leave a legacy. And I, I you know, and I want to leave that, that legacy for my daughter so that when she starts pursuing all her crazy dreams, nobody could tell her no because she could say, well, fuck you. You know, my dad did all this shit, you know? Um, and that's why I bring my daughter into the, the world that I'm in. You know, she's already acting, doing commercials. She's already doing films. She's already doing all this stuff. You know, she's almost at 1,000 Instagram followers already. Like, she's, she's, she's wants to follow in daddy's footsteps. And I just want to leave that legacy and that, and that, and set that bar for her so that when she's there, you know, nothing seems unattainable for her. That's great. That's, that's, yeah. That's just perfect. I love that's, it. Oh, man. Man, I love it. Like, you just tell you're hungry. I'm like, I'm excited and I'm excited for your journey. Like, I'm, uh, kudos to you. Thank so, and I, I can't wait. I can't wait to see you here in New York again. Um, Thank you. So we're going to finish off with one final question. And I mean, I love this question because there's a lot of listeners that listen to us that would love to train and or, or, you know, looking for something inspiring. But to all inspiring and amateur wrestlers out there, what's a piece of advice that you would give them? Hmm. I don't want to say another cliche answers like trust the process, work your ass off. <laughs> Um, follow your heart. Um, if your heart is not in this business, you're not going to last. Um, and if your heart's in this business, you need to do everything that comes with wanting to be in this business. You need to brand yourself. You need to market yourself. You need to get in shape. You need to work out. You need to train. Um, and it doesn't mean you have to stay in one school and train in one school. I didn't do that. You know, I've, I've had the privilege of training with a bunch of people, a bunch of different schools, a bunch of talent. You know, I, 
I've trained with Cholo, Mariachi Loco, Morrison, Sandow, Jungle Boy, Luchasaurus, B-Boy, you know, just a bunch of these guys, you know, whoever's out there, Jake Atlas, Adrian Qu- We I, I train with any and everybody, you know, um, the Los Luchas, the Santinos bros, like, I... You have to follow your heart, and but but it's more than just following your heart because once your heart is in this, you need to invest in yourself, brand yourself, market yourself, and take all the necessary steps to get to where your wherever your heart wants to take you. Because if not, your heart's not going to be enough. Um, believe in yourself. The the noise, the haters, the naysayers, the doubters, they all go away or they become fans, one or the other. Um, and I've always been, look, man, like, before wrestling, I had haters. When I was in the military, I had haters. When I was growing up, I had haters. Man, they in my DMs heavy now, I tell you. And and, and, and that's that's what it's about, you know, is turning doubters into believers. So my advice is follow your heart. And once you're following your heart on this journey, fuck what anybody else says. As long as you're staying true to who you are and you believe in yourself, everybody else will believe in you once they see you. They want to see you do good but never better than dumb. And once you're doing better than dumb, then they want to support that's great. That's advice. all I can say. That's great, great advice. Uh, I keep Oof. it at 100 every step of the way, and you can bet on it. Yeah. I love it. I love it. So, um, yeah. Wow. <laughs> also, this is the shirt for the movie that we just filmed yesterday. It's yeah. called Kidnap 207. It's called 207, but it's at Kidnap 207. So if you want one of these shirts, there's a GoFundMe link to help support so we can push the film to film festivals and stuff like that. And if you donate at least $20, you'll get a free T-shirt. Oh, perfect. So I'll, for the t-shirt. I'll put all the links in the in the description for sure. below for you. So, but, um, oh, man, Ray, is there, like, anything else, like... Now you got me. You got me. You got seven more minutes. For me. You got seven more minutes. For me. Don't, cut, don't cut my time short. We ain't going home till five, baby. Oh uh, man, air time is air time. You ain't cutting me short. Ain't no no no. no. <laughs> oh man. Uh, last thing I say, just thank you again for your service as well. Oh yeah, like, thank you. You touched on the wrestling, but definitely it takes a lot of just a lot of will and a lot of courage to be able to put your body out there like that, especially serving the country and doing that in the Marines. Like it's yeah, again, a respect you. to you, man. Yeah. Oh man. Thank you so much. Yeah. We appreciate you so much, but, um, tell everybody where they can find you like your merch. Tell, tell everybody. All right. So I'm not a hard person to find. You can find me on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok at Danny limelight. Um, my pro wrestling tea store is pro wrestling tees.com backslash Danny limelight. Um, for any kind of questions about wrestling, movies, acting, stunts, um, anything else that I do in between far and few, um, you can email me at Danny limelight at gmail.com or slide in my DMS. Um, and, 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 and just, I'm open, man. I'm easy to talk to. I'm approachable. I'm not a hard person to get, you know, get in contact with and just reach out, man. I'm, I'm and I'm always going to keep it a hundred. I'm not going to sugarcoat shit. I'm not going to give you the textbook answer. I'm not going to give you the popular answer. I'm going to keep it straightforward, which will let you know exactly what it is. So like, don't be shy, man. Hit a brother up. Let's do something. Let's make magic. Let's make movies. Let's, let's, let's do something. Let's Ooh. make noise. Oof, I love it. Yes. Make it happen. Oh man. You really are like one of the humble people that I've like talked to on the podcast. Like, I love it. Like it, you know, sometimes like with some people it can be intimidating or it's just weird or whatever the scenario is, but you've really been like such a fun podcast to like work Thank with. You. And oh man, it's funny. I, lo- I love it. We try to be entertaining around here. So I love it that you're t- now I gotta go follow you on TikTok. Right. Hey, now you have to sign hey, up. I'm, on- almost, I'm almost at 50 K followers on TikTok. Oh, Oh man, hey. <laughs> are you doing hey. like some dances? Like, is there is there not something? Not really. I, I do this one because I know. <laughs> I know that one, so I do that one. Um, but yeah, most of my viral videos are from the military or like with my daughter. I think. Um, yeah, I just I just I just posted one yesterday with Debo from back in the day. You know, shout out to the OG Debo wherever you at. Um, I got a video with him from one of my wrestling matches in Ventura. He came to watch and. He ended up grabbing me by my neck, you know, and it was just a cool, really cool video with him. So I posted it yesterday. It's almost at 500,000 views. Um, videos with my daughter at like almost a million views. Uh-huh. And yeah, I, I like to have fun, man. Like if you go to my Instagram, you look at my stories, you look at my posts, like I'm, I'm having fun. I'm, I'm making movies. I'm, I'm, and by movies, I mean not only literally movies that I'm making, but like fucking living life. You get one life, one life, one life, one life. Nah, and that's it. It's done. It's like, I will. It's finished. Benito. 
And, and, and I, I, I promised myself, man, after I hit the lowest of lows, rock bottom teaches you lessons. Money, that rock bottom teaches you lessons. Mountaintops never will. And when I hit that point in my life, I told myself, never the fuck again. And this last year has been fucking amazing. Oh, and I'll leave you with that. Ooh, that's the way to end it. I love it. Yeah. Hashtag making moments, yeah. as me and Ray always yeah. say. Yeah. Making yeah. moments. So, but <laughs> guys, thank take you. notes, people. Take yes, notes. take notes. <laughs> Slide in the DMs, <laughs> <laughs> but don't be a creep. You know, like don't don't don't, don't be a creep. Okay. Don't right? send me Tony's a Spider Man. <laughs> no, I don't see that. And I'm going to sit oh, here yeah. and I'm really going to hope for the faction with you and Ortiz and Santana. And I'm going to be there with the chancleta and I'm all for this. So <laughs> I love it so much. Uh. But guys, thank you so much for watching another episode of Under the Ropes, Under the No Holds Part Network. I'm your host as always, the EVP Giggles, the heartbreak chick, the queen of the indies, Tiffany. We're joined by the law, Ray Ramundo. Danny, thank you so much. I, I wish you so much luck. Again, I, I'm going to... When things come back and you come to New York, I'm gonna come and I'm gonna come give you a big hug and like you know you're you're the best. Like I really Thank appreciate you, guys so, you so much. I really really enjoyed this interview. You guys kept it fun, and I'm just glad we got to mix it up. You know. Yes. <laughs> Bye guys. Thank you so much for watching. There's something.